Welcome to Listertainment, the channel that promises entertainment but never delivers. This will be one of the best videos on my channel, not because of my commentary of course, but because everybody likes to see Hail Mary shots land and turn fights on their head. You get really excited to see one of the fighters hurt and the other guy trying to close the fight by coming in with wild punches that sometimes allows the hurt fighter to land that miraculous punch that ends the fight or turns the fight in their favor. I love this. If you happen to enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe down below. Also be sure to turn on those notifications and please let me know in the comments who do you wish would have landed a Hail Mary shot. I would have enjoyed Brian Ortega landing a crazy shot on Max Holloway. We'll start with a boxing fight between Diego Corrales and Jose Luis Castillo back in 2005. This was a unification fight in the lightweight division and it's one of the greatest fights of all time. Both of these fighters just stood in front of each other swinging with reckless abandon. Both men had issues with their vision as Castillo had a cut over his left eye and Corrales had his left eye almost swollen shut. But no knockdowns had happened though until the faded 10th round. Unification lightweight title fight. Oh, what a left Castillo knocked down Corrales twice in this round and Corrales lost even more points after the referee took a point away for spitting out his mouthpiece too many times. But Corrales was not done. Corrales, although badly hurt, was able to get a great right hand that hurt Castillo really bad. He then swarmed him and Castillo seemed to be out on his feet so the referee stopped the fight. It was a great, great fight. Beautiful left hook to the body, bang! Scott Smith is hurt bad! He's covered up but this guy is always dangerous, bang! He comes waiting with his hands down! The fight between Scott Smith and Pete Sell happened in 2006 and they had one of the best knockouts ever. The fight was very tight as both fighters were going back and forth and decided to throw a huge right punch that knocked out Cell cold. After the fight was called, you could see Smith on the ground complaining of the pain from the body shot. Last year in the first fight between Andy Ruiz and Anthony Joshua, most people did not expect the fight to go the way it did. Everybody thought that Joshua who was much bigger would dominate the fight and when he knocked down Ruiz in the third round, everybody just thought that the fight was going the way it was expected to go. Although Ruiz was invisibly hurt after this knockdown, he was hit a couple more times by Joshua and it did seem to cause Ruiz to tumble a bit as if he had been hurt again. But Ruiz just kept throwing his big power punches back and was lucky enough to catch Joshua with something big. Ruiz hit Joshua right on the temple which staggered him and Ruiz took advantage to knock him down. The fight continued after Joshua beat the count but he was visibly hurt for the majority of the rest of the fight until the 7th round when he was knocked down again and the referee stopped the fight since Joshua was not responding in a good way. Tommy Morrison and Razor Rudock met in 1995 to try and win the vacant heavyweight title. In the first round, Morrison was knocked down by Rudock by a great uppercut. Oh, Morrison! Morrison was able to recover and managed to get a good uppercut of his own in the second round that gave Rudock a standing eight count since he was hurt and was holding on to the ropes. Then came the sixth round. Morrison seemed to be hurt by a left hook that wobbled him enough for Rudak to try and jump on him to try to win the fight. But Morrison pulled an incredible left hook of his own that knocked down Rudak in spectacular fashion. I truly didn't think that Rudak would get up from that, but he did, but was badly hurt. Morrison took advantage and beat him until the referee stopped the fight. Jorge Fernando Castro was making his second defense of his middleweight title against John David Jackson in 1994. Jackson was a previous champion and was trying to get his belt back after he was stripped of it since he fought in a non-title bout without the commission's permission. 
Jackson was easily winning the fight on all the judges cards and Castro had a cut over both of his eyes. But somehow Castro was able to do this. Zion, a broadcasting career is a good thing. Uh, Castro doesn't have the career of a model the way his face looks right now. Castro's in trouble too right now. We're, we're closing in on the end. Yeah, if, if he applies himself now, he'll, he can stop. In the ninth round, Castro seemed to be hurt after getting hit with a straight left that almost made him curl up. Jackson jumped on him on the ropes, but Castro took the barrage and rose up to deliver a right-left combination that knocked down Jackson. Jackson did beat the count, but after being knocked down two more times by Castro, the referee stopped the fight. This was named the fight of the year 1994. In the rematch between Chris Eubank Sr. and Michael Watson in 1991, where they were fighting for the vacant super middleweight title, Watson was on top of the world. He was up on the judges' scorecards and knocked down Eubank in the 11th round, who seemed visibly hurt after getting back up. Or maybe he was just tired. What a round! What a round! And he's down! But Eubank was not done. Back he comes. He came back with a perfect right uppercut that knocked down Watson like a sack of potatoes, causing him to hit the back of his head against the ropes. The fight kept going but was stopped in the 12th round after Watson appeared to be hurt and never truly recovered. He actually received a career-ending injury that put him in a coma for 40 days and had 6 brain operations to remove a blood clot. Fabricio Verdum and Fedor Emelianenko faced each other back in 2010 in the event held by Strikeforce. Everybody expected Fedor to win this fight and he was a 4-1 favorite in this fight. Early on, they traded shots and Fedor was able to get a good right hand that put Verdum on his ass, but he was unable to finish the fight. Verdum is an amazing jiu-jitsu fighter, so he was completely in his element after going to his back. But Fedor was on a 28 win streak and he can also fight pretty well on the ground. So nobody expected him to be caught in a triangle armbar and be forced to tap out. Some people say Verdum faked being hurt in order to take the fight to the ground. But apparently somebody asked him on an Reddit AMA and he said that he was actually hurt but was able to recover. It looks like he was going to tap. Andy Lee faced off against John Jackson in 2014 and was losing the fight. He was knocked down in the first round and Jackson continued to try to land the same shot for the rest of the fight. Then during the fifth round, Jackson was able to hurt Lee once again after hitting him with consecutive right hands, pushing him to the ropes where he landed a pretty good left hook, which caused Lee to move away to do this. Well, I didn't see the first one, but I saw the second one. <laughs> Is Jackson trying to load up some shots here? He's got it back on the ropes, nails him with a pretty good shot, and he's staggered him just a bit. Look at that! Right as Lee got away and appeared hurt, he went to lean against the ropes, and as expected, Jackson came in fast with his defense down as Lee threw the perfect, incredibly fast right hand that knocked out Jackson cold. The referee stopped the fight immediately since Jackson landed on his face without ever putting his hands down to try and catch himself. This has to be the craziest comeback win in UFC history, and he dropped him to the ground. Congo kept recovering a little bit, but was hurt multiple times by Barry with everybody thinking that it's over. But Congo just kept recovering, until he finally got back on his feet to do this. Congo with his back to the fence threw two perfect punches with his right hand that both landed, but the second one completely knocked out Barry, who was unable to recover. How the hell do you get hurt that badly and just keep recovering within seconds? This was just amazing. This video was extremely fun to make, although it did take me some time to find 10 videos. Some of these videos were completely new to me, so being able to see them for the first time was really interesting and fun. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.